Once the solution has been calculated, it's possible to examine the results and extract data, and this is called post-processing. Post-processing has two different categories. One is solution visualization, where we use contour or vector or streamline plots to see what the flow looks like, and we can see things like whether there's flow separation, where shocks or shear layers or other flow features form, and whether or not key flow features are being resolved. The other category involves extracting numerical data, and numerical post-processing tools are used to get quantitative results like forces and moments, heat transfer coefficients, any surface and volume integrated quantities, and flux balances. Doing simple post-processing like energy and mass balances and visualizing flow patterns or temperature distributions is an important sanity check in all cases that you run, and it can sometimes also be used as a means of establishing whether the solution is correct when the residual plot shows high values. Sometimes high residual values can be caused by a small number of poor quality cells, which would possibly lead us to think the solution is not converged, when in fact it actually is converged. In many cases, after a converged solution is obtained, it's good practice to question the results and consider making revisions to the model in order to test the assumptions that were made or the models that were used. Common issues to consider are if a laminar flow calculation was performed, is the flow maybe turbulent, or if a steady state calcula calculation was performed, is the flow maybe actually unsteady, are there compressibility effects that need to be considered, or are there three-dimensional effects that need to be considered? Boundary conditions can also be evaluated. It's normal to think about whether or not the computational domain is large enough so the boundaries are located far enough away from the area of interest, whether appropriate boundary condition types are used, and whether the boundary values are reasonable. And finally, it's very important also to consider the mesh, and items to consider include can the mesh be refined to improve the results? Does the solution change significantly with a refined mesh, or is the solution mesh independent? And does the mesh resolution of the geometry need to be improved? This concludes the overview of the CFD process. To summarize, CFD simulations using mainstream CFD programs are executed using the steps that were just described. And these steps are defining your modeling goals, identifying the domain that you will model, creating a solid model of the domain, designing and creating the mesh, setting up the solver and computing the solution, examining the results, and considering revisions to the model. It's especially important to identify the objectives of the simulation before creating the geometry in the mesh, and it is critical to make sure the simulation is fully converged and that the correct physical models have been applied. Finally, it's always a good idea to question your results and consider making revisions to the model in order to establish the correctness of your modeling choices and assumptions.